Got a lot of big wigs behind me here. This is amazing. Well, welcome everybody. We're so excited that, uh, that you guys are here, and uh, thanks for the media for, for for covering this. It's a huge deal. I mean, we're uh, preparing for the eclipse this week. Uh, Southeast Oklahoma, uh, I'll go ahead and just say it is the best place in the entire world to view this eclipse. So uh, we know that we're going to have an influx of people come into the great state of Oklahoma. And you can see the group behind me. We've been preparing for months for the influx of people coming in to the state. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a huge for uh, tourism and a chance for us to show off the Oklahoma standard, the Oklahoma hospitality. Uh, so we're really excited to, to, to showcase Oklahoma, especially uh, southeast Oklahoma. Um, as uh, as you as you're enjoying, uh, uh, I just want to remind everybody that comes to Oklahoma to follow the instructions of our law enforcement. Uh, we're going to have some National Guard there and I've got people behind us. They're going to give some more um, direct instructions on what's going to what's going to happen and, and what they've been doing to prepare. So uh, thank you, guys. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun day and hopefully you get everybody has their glasses ready to go to, to view it uh, as well. So I'll turn it over to. Uh, uh, the greatest public safety guy in the country, Mr. Tim Tipper. Thank you. <laughs> uh, again, my name is Tim Tipton. I'm commissioner of public safety, and I'll just real quickly kind of run through a, a quick public safety overview of this event. Like the governor said, we've been preparing for this for several months. Um, we, for any large scale event, uh, we, we, uh, activate an incident management team that that coordinates with a lot of the the state officials and their agencies that are behind us as well as the local agencies county and municipal agencies um, you know this event's primarily uh, going to affect three counties in southeast oklahoma um, our expectation is the the main issue public safety wise is just going to be a traffic management incident um, you know, if you've been to Broken Bow in that area, you know how limited access it is. So um, our expectations of inflow of traffic. Um, if you've been to Broken Bow Lake on a Friday in July or August, then you've seen the traffic conditions down there. So that's our expectation. Of course, we've been monitoring any other types of potential threats um, and we feel very confident that we're, we're well prepared and um, have it staffed accordingly to be able to monitor um, any issue that might come up. And again, public safety is our main concern and also that the, the, the folks that go down there have an enjoyable time at the event. And uh, we feel confident that the, the state and those local counties and communities are well prepared for it. So I'm gonna have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Joe Williams come up and give some pointers and tips about safety things that, that the, the travelers can expect and, and things that they can do to, to best be prepared for their making their way in and out of southeastern Oklahoma. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> start off, I just want, I want to thank all the other state entities uh, for, for everyone's input and cooperation, and we all work together great. Uh, just like the commissioner said, we've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not going to say that, that we have every everything worked out as far as what could potentially happen, but we have prepared and I, I feel like we've got a good plan in place. We've got a good incident management team in place and we look forward to uh, going down there and making it a safe environment for everyone, hopefully. Uh, just real quick, there was a, a broadcast put out press release, uh, social media release, and it, it touched on some of the safety topics uh, for people that are visiting the area. And I just wanna go back over those. One of the main ones is just make sure you don't stop on the roadway. The infrastructure there is a lot of two lane highways with, with no shoulders. And when I say stop on the roadway, that also means the adjacent grass area. We want, we want people to pull completely off the roadway before they get out and take pictures or, or try to view. Even leading into the event, we want to make sure everyone completely gets off the roadway. Don't you know? We don't want people jamming traffic up because it's going to cause a, a, a collision potentially. Another big deal is going to be there's going to be a lot of uh, pedestrians in the area. 
please be mindful and, and watch for, for people that are on foot crossing the roadway and just, just use extra caution. And with that, I just want to remind everyone, 100% of your attention needs to be on driving when you're behind the wheel operating the vehicle. So please put your electronic devices down and drive the car. That, that's where your attention needs to be. Another big one is uh, headlights. Definitely during the totality of the, the eclipse, please have your headlights on, but it's always a good idea with that much traffic down there. If, you, you know, if, if you're willing to turn them on, go ahead and do that. That just gives extra visibility. There's a lot of traffic in a very condensed area with a lot of private driveways to businesses and such. And we just want to make sure everyone's paying, paying attention. And that extra headlight may be something that will uh, keep a collision from happening. If you do get into a crash, a minor crash, what I'm going to ask is that go ahead and get the other person's information, get the tag off the vehicle, remove your vehicles from the roadway, please. Notify us. We will respond. We will do whatever Title 47 tells us to, and that's $500 worth of damage or more. Or if you request an accident to be worked, we will definitely investigate the collision. But what we don't want is for cars to remain in the roadway, especially, again, with this much traffic. We need to get everyone off the roadway to the shoulder, the grass shoulder, and clear the road until we get law enforcement there. Hitchhikers. Don't pick up hitchhikers. Even without this event, we shouldn't be picking up hitchhikers. If you're concerned about somebody that's on foot walking, a hitchhiker, uh, definitely uh, reach out to law enforcement, and we'll, we'll get someone in the area to, to check on that person and make sure they're okay. Uh, that's all I have right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the uh, Office of Emergency Management Director, Annie Vest. Thank you for your time. Good morning. As mentioned, my name is Annie Vest, and I'm the State Director of the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management. And before I get into the eclipse, I wanted to just begin by expressing our heartfelt concern for anybody affected by last night's storms. Uh, I extend the sincerest gratitude to our emergency management professionals, the agencies behind me, and the first responders for the dedicated response. We were working well into the evening hours. Our agency has been involved with the eclipse planning and the State Emergency Operations Center is prepared to assist with any last minute requests that may come up in the final days as we're moving towards the actual eclipse date. Our staff has been working closely with the Department of Public Safety and other agencies here today, as well as our local emergency managers from municipalities, counties, tribal nations in McCurtain County, Choctaw, Pushmataha, and LaFleur counties. And they began planning together with us in 2022. So this has been a long extended planning effort. I'd also like to recognize those local emergency managers who've participated in this planning effort the Southeast Regional Coordination Center, who have stepped up and have led this local event for Eclipse Safety and are leading the local resource coordination in the Southeast area of our state. Events like the Eclipse allow for us a great opportunity to test emergency management systems, and it takes the team at the state level and the local level to make this a success. Thankfully, our team has a lot of experience and we have a dedicated personnel from many agencies at all levels of government who have come together to help in both scheduled events like this and also in natural events like what we've experienced over the past month with the wildfires and the storms last evening. And now I would like to turn over to Major General Thomas Mancino. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. I have just a brief update. Um, I'm very sensitive to the fact that when the National Guard deploys and the citizens in Oklahoma see uh, uniformed service members, they want to know what they're doing. So I wanted to just stand up here before you today and let you know that our approximately 30 man civil support team is going to be down in the area supporting the Oklahoma Highway Patrol and the local emergency managers with various tasks. This is a routine operation for us. We do it approximately 50 times a year. You might have seen us at places like the Super Bowl or OU or OSU games. Anytime there's a large crowd of civilians in Oklahoma, we like to be there in case we're needed. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, that's all the update that I have. I'll make myself available after this for any questions that you might have. And I will be followed by the ODOT director, Director Hitz. 
Morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate Commissioner Tipton and his team and their leadership in, in uh, really uh, what I would consider to be some very unique and thorough preparations, uh, along with the rest of the team of the agencies behind us. As Oklahoma agencies, we're not unfamiliar with working together uh, to manage conditions like we're going to experience in Southeast Oklahoma. Uh, from the Department of Transportation perspective, uh, the event is going to be an exercise in congestion management. Uh, so that's just to be expected. And I want the travel and public to be aware of that. Uh, they're going to need to exercise patience and diligence, uh, take safety precautions. Uh, you've heard a lot of discussion about putting away distractions. That should be first and foremost. Pay attention to what's in front of you. We're going to experience pedestrians in the roadway in some cases, even though we're discouraging it. Uh, so that's going to happen. So we're going to ask the travel and public to really be uh, diligent and pay attention to what's in, on the road in front of them. Uh, in southeastern Oklahoma in particular, we have a lot of rural two-lane highways that don't have a safety shoulder on them. So there is nowhere to pull off. Uh, so we need to be mindful of those conditions and be exercise extra care there. And uh, please don't stop in the roadway during the eclipse and, and take pictures or anything like that. Uh, this is going to be very challenging. Uh, expect uh, first responders to take a little longer than normal to, to reach a, a situation that might develop. Uh, so we've got to really have that awareness. Fill your gas tank if you're down there. Anticipate that you could be stuck in congestion for an extended period of time. Uh, from a construction work standpoint in the three county area, we've got what I would consider to be five really active construction zones. Uh, three of them will minimize activity in those zones. Uh, they should not be an impact really to the traveling public. Two locations I want to make sure everybody is aware of. Uh, State Highway 109 that is directly south of the town of Fort Towson. Uh, we have a full closure to do a bridge replacement there. Uh, so that highway is closed south of Fort Towson. Also on 271, just about two and a half miles north of the Texas border, the Red River, uh, we've got that narrowed to one lane in either direction, again, for a bridge replacement project. Uh, that's a very short construction zone, but it will be narrowed from four lanes down to two, one lane each direction. Uh, so the public needs to be aware of that. In anticipation of maybe some hiccups in the cellular phone service, the last thing I'd leave you with is if everybody remembers what one of these is, uh, it's a paper map. I'm a little bit old school. I carry one in every vehicle that I have. I'd encourage you to make a stop at a welcome center uh, and pick up a paper map, stick it in your glove box, just in case, uh, if, especially if you're unfamiliar with the highway system in the area, uh, I would strongly encourage you to do that because you may turn out that, that, it, that you might need it. So uh, with that, I'd like to bring up the executive director of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority, Joe E. Kelly. <clears throat> well, at this point, I think just about everything's been said as, as it relates to highway uh, travel. But just to echo one of the things that uh, Director Gatz said, the, this this event and pulling over and parking on the shoulders, it's just not going to be a good location. Uh, headlights are going to come on. That's going to affect your ability to see the eclipse. So uh, being near a highway is not a good location for uh, viewing of the eclipse. Uh, we've been planning this for several years. Uh, since I attended the last eclipse back in Nebraska a few years ago, uh, just in anticipation of the added uh, traffic on our system. Uh, we've been coordinating recently with the Department of Transportation, obviously, and the Highway Patrol. Just want to bring some extra attention to a, uh, since we have the, the main four-lane divided highway that services Southeast Oklahoma and the Indian Nation Turnpike, which is State Highway 375, we have a one construction zone on that uh, turnpike that is down to one lane each direction, and that's near Daisy. Uh, we've put out, and we'll continue to put out some additional information on that. Uh, we're strengthening the traffic control, really uh, providing additional notification five and even 10 miles back from, from that uh, uh, pinch point, uh, just in anticipation of the additional congestion that could occur at that location. We're staffed up with additional highway patrol in the area that uh, work for the Turnpike Authority, so we have those. Uh, one particular thing that I, I did want to uh, mention, we reached out to the folks at our service plaza there in McAllister, 
They have uh, promised that their fuel tanks are full and they will keep them full through the weekend. Uh, that's their intent. So uh, uh, in addition to keeping your uh, uh, fuel tank uh, full while you're in the area waiting on the congestion, uh, they, there's a good place to stop and they should have fuel. One additional thing, um, we are still a cash turnpike on the Indian Nation Turnpike. The rest of our network, just about all of it, has been converted to cashless over the last couple of years. Major safety improvement that we've been pushing to get done. That area uh, has been, is under undergoing some of the construction, anticipating that conversion later this year. Uh, we're staffed up with additional toll collectors down at Antlers and the McAllister plazas uh, to help facilitate. But really, if you're trying to get, if you intend to use the Indian Nation Turnpike and you have time this week and you don't have a pike pass, I would suggest that you go and, and get one. We've got several locations in Oklahoma City and Tulsa uh, that you can pick them up or you can visit our website, pikepass.com, or just call 1-800-PIKE-PASS and we'll get one in the mail to you uh, immediately. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce uh, the Secretary of Tourism, Shelley Zumwalt. Hello. It's kind of interesting. Everyone up here is saying, be safe, do this. And I get to talk about safety, but also fun. So it's an exciting time for Oklahoma. We are so lucky to have the eclipse, especially the 100% totality in Southeast Oklahoma. I'm going to talk a little bit about some safety things and things that you can do, and then kind of talk about the broader perspective of what this means for the state. If, um, if you don't have glasses all right, already, I've got good news for you. We have them at travelok.com. Make sure you're experiencing that with some eclipse glasses. The second thing is we also have merchandise. If you are as excited about this eclipse as I am, you can get one of these shirts at travelok.com. Want to get that in there. Uh, our theme for the eclipse is total eclipse of the park. I'm going to pause for a moment because I love that name so much. We are super excited to be a part of the eclipse, but more so because we have so many places in Oklahoma that are state parks where you can experience this eclipse. We want you to have the best time and to do it safely in one of our state parks. But if you are heading down to Southeast Oklahoma to experience it in Lake Worcester, Talamina State Park, or Beaver's Bend, all of the things that my colleagues have talked about are super important. And I wanna echo what Director Gatz said in that, if you are dependent upon GPS to be successful in getting somewhere, you will have places, especially in our state parks, where you, you won't have service. So just be prepared, take a map with you because you will need it, I can promise you that. And cell service is gonna be overloaded in an area that is not used to the number of people that are gonna be down there. Some other things that I think are really exciting about the eclipse. Uh, the population of Hocha Town is about 250 people. Broken Bow is about 2,500. McCurtain County is right around 30,000 people, and we are expecting over 60,000 people in that area, right around McCurtain County and the surrounding counties. That is a tremendous thing for rural areas in Oklahoma. We had right around $11.8 billion in growth from 21 to 22 for tourism overall. And of that growth from 21 to 22, 32% of that was in Oklahoma and Tulsa counties. But the inverse of that, I think, is so much more enlightening in that 68% of that was in our rural areas of Oklahoma, like McCurtain County, like Pushmataha County, like Northwest and Northeast Oklahoma. And so if we're looking at this from a tourism perspective, this is an opportunity for us to show off those places in Oklahoma that aren't necessarily being on the news every single day because they are special and they are important and they are worth taking people to and having them visit. So if you're, if, as you're looking at what you're gonna do at, for the eclipse over the next couple of days, if you don't have a plan, I really encourage you to experience it in one of our state parks. The total eclipse of the park is gonna be a once in a lifetime experience. And looking at what the opportunity is for the state and for this event, you know, we're lucky that the eclipse, that nature chose us, but success is luck plus preparation. And so given that all my colleagues have definitely put in the work to be prepared, I hope that you are lucky enough to get to experience it in one of our state parks. Thank you. And I'm gonna to toss it to Commissioner Keith Reed. Following tourism, I feel a little bit like a wet blanket here. I'm going to talk to you about public health. I'm pleased to be here to speak about public health um, and our role in this planning effort. 
State Department of Health team in Southeast Oklahoma has worked very hard uh, for the last several months uh, preparing for this, making a priority for the health and safety of Oklahomans. There's several areas we've been focusing our preparedness efforts on. I'm just gonna review a few. First, we know the eclipse will attract numerous vendors, including mobile food vendors. We welcome them and we know they're an important part of this gathering. Food safety is one of our top priorities, uh, but this we've been working with these vendors and potential vendors to promote and enforce food safety practices to prevent the possibility of foodborne illnesses. We wanna make sure those partaking in our state's great food do so safely. Next, in an item that is somewhat, somewhat unique to this situation, we know that the influx of people in close proximity to what are normally quiet area residentials, uh, this can be unsettling to family pets. With that in mind, another area of focus has been on domesticated animals in the area and making sure they have their proper vaccination specifically against rabies. If someone does experience any type of animal bite, they should call their local health department. From there, we will work with the individual to talk about next steps, assess risk, and uh, identify uh, what to do in the, in the situation. Finally, and especially important in this situation, as already has been mentioned, is sun protection measures and eye safety during the eclipse. Do not look at the eclipse without the proper eye protection. I cannot emphasize this enough. Make sure the glasses you're viewing the eclipse through are in line with the American Astronomical Society, labeled with ISO 123, 12-2. That's a code, an international code, uh, which denotes that the glasses reduce visible sunlight to safe levels and block ultraviolet and infrared radiation. Very important that you have proper glasses for this. Be sure to purchase these glasses from a reputable manufacturer. It's been recommended you get them from our state parks and tourism. We support that uh, or any other authorized dealer. Uh, we're continuing to actively engage with stakeholders to address any public health concerns that emerge between now and even the days following this event. I want to say thank you uh, to all our partners, partners behind me, and then our partners in Southeast Oklahoma. We've worked very well together for months in preparation for this. And in closing, I would say the health and safety of our community is our utmost priority and working together and staying informed, we can make this solar eclipse a memorable and safe event for everyone in the Southeast part of the state. And we're looking forward to it. I'll now turn it over to the National Weather Service Science and Operations Officer, Todd Lindley. Well, good morning, everyone. And I think, you know, one thing we haven't discussed yet is the weather forecast and everyone wants to know, well, is it going to be cloudy? The one thing I can tell you six days before the eclipse is it's too early to change your plans based on forecasts. Uh, we're still uh, analyzing the forecast models as they come in. And I'm sure everyone has seen early predictions on social media uh, that are very pessimistic. I will say, we will remain in an active weather pattern, but the trend over the last 24 hours or so has been that we may be between weather systems, which may give us an opportunity to have uh, some viewing uh, potential in Southeast Oklahoma. In fact, that's trending from early forecasts of poor potential to more of a moderate potential to have at least uh, clear skies down there. So. The trend now in the current official forecast is for partly sunny skies with temperatures generally in the 70s. There is currently a 20% probability of showers or thunderstorms in proximity to Southeast Oklahoma. But in general, it looks like the, the trends are improving for to have some potential uh, visibility in Southeast Oklahoma for the eclipse. So the last thing I will conclude with is just to mention that if you are in an area viewing the eclipse from 95%, uh, you're not experiencing totality. There is really no comparison. It's night and day, literally, between uh, 95, 99% eclipse and, and totality. So if at all possible, I would highly suggest getting to the area of totality. So with that, I'll turn it over to the Oklahoma Forestry Services Director, Mark Goler. Thank you, Todd. You may wonder why Forestry Service is involved in this, but you know, this group behind me, I'm extremely humbled to know nearly every person behind me. 
we work very well together in all kinds of emergencies. We support one another throughout wildfires, through snowstorms, ice storms, doesn't matter what it is. Oklahoma Forestry Services is a state's wildfire agency. Oklahoma's fire season is January 1st through December 31st. We can have a fire any time of the year in Oklahoma. And that is one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons that we're involved in this effort. First and foremost, we're supporting the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, who's been a great partner of ours over the years with their aircraft division, with their troopers, supporting wildfire across the state. It's our turn to be able to support them. We're, they're using our Southeast Area Headquarters at Broken Bow for their incident, command, incident management team. They're setting up their incident uh, command post there and utilizing our internet or radio systems or towers, just whatever we can do to support them logistically, our folks stand prepared to do so. We also have our employees, our wildland firefighters are ready to <coughs> respond throughout this event, through the weekend, through the eclipse, and as they always are 24-7, 365, our firefighters stand ready to respond to a wildfire. Even though we have seen green up and the conditions have lessened there in southeast Oklahoma, we still stand ready because of the situation that uh, we may face. Human caused fire behavior or human caused fire ignitions is a big thing for us in Oklahoma. And so, with the number of folks that um, Director Zumwalt mentioned that are coming into the area, we need to be ready. Oklahoma, southeast Oklahoma in particular, is the seat of our commercial forest lands. Believe it or not, Oklahoma has the largest paper mill in the world in Valiant, Oklahoma. There's a lot of forestry that goes on in this state, and it's primarily in eastern Oklahoma where our commercial timberlands are. Also, in addition to that, we will have our fire prevention folks at Beavers Bend State Park. They'll be handing out fire prevention materials to all the visitors that come into the park, as well as other areas. They have a number of handouts that will help keep the area safe. One of the things that we've done in, pre in preparation for events just like this, we have mapped over 4,400 cabins in the Hochatown and Beavers Bend State Park area. This effort has been going on for a number of years because of the, the potential fire problems that we see associated with the rental cabins, visitors coming from all over this, all over the state, all over the country to see Hochatown, to see the beauty of Southeast Oklahoma. And so with that, after mapping all these structures, we have established a website called safestayok.org. And we have developed a QR code that is in all of the tourism packets, the tourism guides that are in every cabin. This has been in association with the McCurtain County Chamber of Commerce. Visitors, when they go into the cabins, they can either go to that website, they can scan this QR code. It'll give them wildfire information, wildfire safety information has a live map that in the event that there is a wildfire in the area, it will show them where they are on the map, which road they're on, which cabin they're in, and the nearest evacuation route out to the highway. So this has been a, this is a big deal for us. Our staff has been working on this for a long time for events just like this. And we did that with the intent that for the visitors that come to enjoy Oklahoma's beauty, that we'll be able to keep them as safe as possible. So with that, I will in this yeah, and be, 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 <coughs> Has there been an economic impact projection that I made by like a local chamber in Southeast Oklahoma or my uh, Department of Tourism? That's actually the part of my talking points that I left out. So thank you so much for that question. Um, yeah, we're looking at about $7.4 million per day over the weekend, including Monday um, to impact that area. So this is a tremendous thing for that area. You heard me say the population numbers and um, you know the number of people that we have descending on the area. And that's going to create a, you know just a really tremendous economic impact for that area. When will uh, emergency management teams and the National Guard start meeting in that area? Is it on Monday or the days prior? Our incident management team will start moving that way tomorrow and then build up. You know, the and something that I don't know that we mentioned, 
the inflow of traffic is going to happen starting really tomorrow over the next three days. The problem is going to be the exiting traffic all even at the same time. I'm guessing the minute after the eclipse is over, people are going to try and head home. So we're there through the duration all the way through the weekend, really starting tomorrow through the weekend and then all the way through Monday until everybody's exited. I have two quick questions, if I can. I'm from Spyro, Oklahoma, Fort County, so I'm close to where Totality is going to be. So I'm pretty excited uh, about this. When it comes to traffic control, um, how you kind of talk a little bit about the plans regarding that. I know some states, I believe it's Arkansas or Texas, truckers potentially, they wanted them like, to try to not be on, I think, I 40 um, through that part of the state. Is there anything regarding that that the state is doing? Uh, the only thing I would add is, is the trucking industry. Of course, we can't just shut that down. Uh, as far as I-40, there's not going to be any reduction up there. We have uh, reached out to the trucking industry as far as the oversized loads in the area, uh, and those will be suspended Sunday and Monday, just so we don't have a potential of one of those oversized loads or CMVs getting into a collision and, and blocking the road for hours on end. But as, uh, other than that, everyone's aware of it in the trucking industry, uh, and hopefully they'll use alternate routes if possible. But that, that's the one thing we have worked out with them is the oversized loads for Sunday and Monday, the 7th and 8th. And my second quick question, I know McCurfin County, or did you have a response to that too? I'm sorry. The only thing I'd add is, is where you're looking at an interstate uh, or something like the Indian Nation Turnpike, those facilities are designed to handle high traffic volumes. Uh, so those are won't be the focus. It's really going to boil down to when you get into the region and, and you're dealing with some of the some of the really rural two lane highways. Uh, that's where we're going to experience the largest amount of congestion. And uh, as was pointed out, forestry and logging is very active in the in the region, and uh, we're going to see logging trucks that are going to be out there mixed in with this traffic to some extent. Uh, and it's just hard to shut those operations down. So uh, that's something to be mindful of. And then my second quick question, McCurk County Emergency Management had requested the National Guard's assistance, local National Guard's assistance, saying an influx of potentially 100,000. Has the state changed its numbers regarding the numbers? I think it was between 16, uh, 17 to 66,000 more people. I'm wondering if those numbers have changed any. So, you know, we're, we're trying to make our best estimates and looking at, at what tourism's had as far as reservations, what we know the, the, the Airbnb and the cabin rental, um, you know, uh, registrations, things like that. So we're looking really at around that 60,000, possibly 70,000 number is what our expectation is for the influx. Um, you know, the you know, I know the, the National Guard being deployed. So the National Guard is is deploying at our request, DPS's request um, to come down. Look, anytime you have this type of an event, and we 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 live and prepare for these types of, of event all the time. That's you know a big part of our mission. And whether it be a OU football game, a Thunder basketball game, the good news about this event is it's not isolated into one building. So the uh, the the uh, the threat potential is looked at quite differently when it's spread out over three counties. So, but you know, having the resources that the guard provides to us, does the highway patrol and DPS on all large scale events where we have a lot of inflow. So we we utilize them as a as a as a uh, resource on a regular basis and and partner them up with our resources. Do you have any concerns about there being any? So, you know, we, we monitor threats to the state of Oklahoma every day through our uh, Octic Refusion Center with all of our federal, state, municipal, and county uh, law enforcement agencies. There are no um, active threats that would uh, escalate um, th this event. Um, we always, you know, we, we we do tabletop exercises. We train for these types of events, and you know it's it's our job to plan for worst case scenario. Um, our our ultimate goal is preventing anything bad from happening, whether that be you know man 
man-made or, or a natural event. Um, and again, our focus on this really is just a, an, a huge increase in traffic control issues. Um, but we're deployed in a way that we'll, we'll be able to adequate, adequately respond to any type of incident that might occur if something does. Um, but we feel as though we're in a really good position as far as we've not had to escalate our threat level um, due to this event. All right, thanks everybody. You have their comfortable contact information if you have further questions.